What's up everyone? This is Josh with another Bitcoin and security related tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're talking about phishing scams. I want to thank my wife for uh, coming up with the idea for this tutorial and the title, Safe or Sus. So we're going to talk about how to spot those suspicious phishing attempts, some patterns for what they look like, and how you can prevent being phished. So first, let's talk about what phishing even is. Phishing is the practice of posing as a legitimate entity to try and trick victims into giving up sensitive private information that can be used to get something from them. So access to an account, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency wallet keys, um, or you know just money in some sense, whether it's, whether it's cryptocurrency or gift cards or cash. Phishing takes many forms, and phishing is something uh, in the security space that evolves very rapidly, and it takes kind of a trained eye and some education to spot these attempts. So let's go over some examples of what phishing actually looks like. Our first two examples are examples of something that is very common in the cryptocurrency space, and that is seed phrase phishing. Seed phrases are 12 to 24 uh, English words that grant access to all of the private keys in a crypto wallet. So if you've ever interacted with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or other cryptocurrencies, you've probably uh, received a seed phrase from a piece of wallet software that you've downloaded, or even a physical hardware wallet. Seed phrases are a super useful technology because they allow easy backup of all of your cryptocurrency keys. So if something happens to the device that your wallet uh, is stored on, you can restore access to your funds in that wallet. The downside of this is seed phrases uh, present a huge target for scammers and thieves. If they can trick you into giving access to your seed phrase or compromise you in some way, they will use that seed phrase to um, create new transactions and send your coins away to their own wallets. Since crypto transactions are irreversible, that means your money is permanently gone. So it's very common for scammers to pose as wallet support and use social media and other channels to try and trick end users into giving them their seed phrases. For example, I found a website that was fairly high in the search results for KeepKey uh, that pretended to be a KeepKey watch wallet. And all it really was was a convincing looking website that would take your seed phrase and send it off to the scammer server. They could then completely clean out your wallet and you would have no recourse to get that money back. Another version of this is the um, Atomic web wallet fish that I found, right? Atomic is another, um, you know, like common mobile wallet and there was some web form out there that was trying to trick users into restoring their wallet by giving the scam site their seed phrase. I have even seen uh, on Twitter circulating around, uh, scammers will pose as a wallet support and link to a Google Doc that asks you to put in your seed phrase. Uh, and it usually says something like, uh, oh, this is encrypted for your security, right? Never enter your seed phrase into any web form or website ever. Just don't do it. There really aren't any web wallets out there that are good or secure to use because web wallets present a huge attack service. Um, you know, even something legitimate like blockchain.com, I don't recommend people use that. I steer people towards mobile wallets and of course hardware uh, dedicated devices like KeepKey, Trezor, Ledger uh, for larger amounts of coins. It's really critical that you only keep your seed phrase for a hardware wallet in physical form. So only keep that written down on paper or metal and stored somewhere safe like a home safe, a bank deposit box, somewhere you know it's secure. Uh, and you never want those keys to touch a network device like a laptop. If you're using something like a mobile wallet for spending money, it's okay to keep that in an encrypted form in something like a secure password manager, but never keep it anywhere where it's stored in plain text. And again, never try to restore that wallet in any kind of website claiming to be support 
That's not how the wallets work. And if you do need to restore your wallet, you should make sure that you're re-downloading it from a legitimate source, like directly from the App Store, or in the case of a hardware wallet, buying a new one directly from the manufacturer, never a reseller. A second type of phishing that I see that's very common in the crypto space is the giveaway scam. This is where somebody poses as a legitimate, uh, often rich individual, um, and pretends that they're doing a generous giveaway where if you send their wallet some amount of cryptocurrency to verify your address, they will double your money and send it back to you. Now the trick here is very simple. Cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible, and so once you send that money to them, they simply take your money and run. If somebody truly does want to give you cryptocurrency, all they need is your public address. You never have to send somebody crypto or anything private like your seed phrase or private keys for somebody to be able to send you money. That's the beauty of cryptocurrency. All you need is, is a completely public address that's safe to share with anybody in order to receive coins. So this again is just sort of tricking people and relying on uh, maybe greed or fear of missing out. Oh, I have 30 minutes left to participate in this giveaway. I better send somebody famous this crypto and get it doubled back. Um, I've seen people that are very intelligent individuals fall for this. Uh, again, because social engineering relies on our human characteristics, like our fear of missing out or our desire to make easy money. So never send anybody crypto uh, with the promise that you'll get crypto back. It's pretty much always going to be a scam. If somebody, again, wants to be generous and introduce you to the crypto space, all they need is your public address. Now, the third type of phishing that I see fairly often uh, is often well outside of the cryptocurrency space, and this is the account freeze or refund related phishing. The first example that I found is I got an email uh, saying that my personal website hosting, my jmcintyre.net web address, was going to be locked out, right? My website's not going to be hosted anymore through uh, cPanel. I thought this was particularly funny because I don't use cPanel for hosting, I use Azure, um, you know, because I like their cloud platform. and. The person said in the email, oh, in order to resolve this, you need to click on a PDF uh, in, in order to see the state of your account. So I'm assuming that this PDF had some kind of malware embedded in it, and they were trying to get me to download that and compromise my computer uh, so they could gain access to sensitive information. So always be aware of whether or not you even use a particular product, right? I, it's hard in the modern world when we often use um, you know, hundreds of online accounts potentially, but again, it stood out to me as sort of just a broad phishing campaign because I don't even use cPanel for hosting. I use Azure VMs. Um, another form of this is something like a refund scam. You get a very generic looking email that says, your premium account is being renewed. Uh, act now if you don't uh, want your account renewed. And you're thinking like, well, what premium account? I never signed up for anything with a premium account. What this does is this leads you down the rabbit hole of a, uh, another very common type of scam called the refund scam. And uh, attackers will work with you and trick you into sending them money in the form of cash or gift cards or something like that. Um, this particular type of scam often preys on older individuals that are less tech savvy. So it's particularly insidious in that sense. Again, very similar to the first two types of scams, this preys on you uh, acting rashly, right? I didn't sign up for a premium account, I don't want my credit card getting charged for this. Or, oh no, my website or my Amazon Prime account is going to be frozen, I better act quickly. So you don't stop and think, and take the time to look at the things in that phishing attempt that, that actually will be suspicious. The last example I have for today is an example uh, that I've talked about in my fake recovery scams video. And this is a little bit less phishing in the sense of like an email or a text message. This is the kind of phishing that a, you know, an actual attacker working directly with you will try and use. So it's very, very common for me to get uh, 
thousands of fake spam comments on my YouTube videos talking about Instagram hackers that will get you access to uh, a crypto wallet that you forgot the password to, or uh, will recover lost or stolen crypto coins, which in a lot of cases isn't even possible. And when you start working with these hackers, hackers, you quickly realize that all they're trying to do is gain access to your existing exchange accounts or wallets. So for example, in the fake recovery scammers video, I worked with a um, hacker that was trying to get into my Coinbase account. And so this person was trying to trick me into giving them two-factor authentication codes. With those codes, they can initiate a password reset and take over uh, my Coinbase account, which would be really awful because, you know, if there's crypto coins already in there or they would have access to purchase with the bank account or something like that, it's really no good. So never give anyone two-factor authentication codes. No legitimate entity will ever need this information to get you back into an account. So for example, if you're locked out of your Coinbase account, Coinbase isn't going to ask you for 2FA codes. And it's very common for scammers to pose as support for a legitimate company. All of these things prey on our human characteristics, our fear of missing out, our fear of losing money, our fear of not having access to our cryptocurrency coins uh, when maybe we dropped our phone in the toilet, right? So what I want to encourage everybody to think about is when you're interacting with these technologies, always take some time to stop and think, right? In most cases, you don't need to rush to restore your wallet if you have a copy of the seed phrase backup, right? If you don't have a copy of the seed phrase backup, you're in trouble anyway. So take your time to download the wallet from a legitimate source. Learn how to verify GPG signatures and hashes. Um, you know, have a good idea of what accounts and services you actually use. If somebody is trying to get you to act very quickly to avoid a charge to your credit card or to um, restore access to an account, stop and think about whether or not that is suspicious. Social engineering relies on our humanity and the characteristics that we all have as human beings, and it is very effective. Most people that get compromised in some way in the tech space get compromised through social engineering because in reality, us, human beings, are a lot easier to trick and hack than technology. So I want to encourage everybody to stop, think, take your time, and educate yourself. Learn how to spot patterns like this. Uh, learn how to spot whether or not an email is safe or sus. So thanks again, Maria, for the great idea for this video and a great video title. And of course, to you, my viewers, thanks as always for watching and thanks for learning something new with me today. Stay safe out there.